Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Walks. We're at Cowell Island at the moment. There's a mansion house, there's a copper mine and some really great geocaches. So come with us. We headed out for the 45 minute drive north of Auckland to Sandspit to catch the 10.30 a.m. ferry. We parked our car in the large car park and headed over to pick up our tickets. We had arrived a little early, so had coffee in the cafe with Tramyard. We met up with Rebel 98 and the rest of the geocachers travelling over to Gorby's event as we boarded the ferry. Up to the top deck for the best view. It's about a 30 minute journey over to Kowau. It started a little overcast, but fined up during the day. The wind reduced a lot in the shelter of the island. The Royal Mail Run takes you round the bays on the western side of the island, dropping off passengers, mail and freight needed by the islanders. The ferry called into Mansion House Bay to drop off passengers wanting more time on the island. The other geocachers on board took the opportunity to disembark as Gorby was placing a new geocache on the island. We stayed on board to complete the cruise as the ferry returns to Mansion House around lunchtime. It was interesting watching what was being dropped off at the different wharves. Sometimes it was goods and sometimes it was people. We came into Smelting House Bay. In 1849, a smelting house for the copper mine was working here. Sandstone walls of the smelting house still remain. After the Battle of Rangariri, Maori prisoners were held here. The Rangariri battle site is featured in another of our cash walks. We turned at South Cove to return to Mansion House Bay and a chance to explore the island on foot. At Mine Point we got a close-up look at the copper mine. The ruins once held the steam engine and pump that kept the mine free of water as the mine was below sea level. Built in 1854, it is very similar to the engine houses found in Cornwall, the home of many of the Kawao miners. We are returning here for the earth cache sometime after lunch. Then it was into Mansion House Bay and a chance to explore historic Mansion House before going geocaching. Kauau Island was purchased by Sir George Grey in 1862. At the time he was serving his second term as Governor of New Zealand. Sir George Grey enlarged and remodelled the former residence of the Mine Superintendent which was built between 1845 and 1847.
Even though there's no COVID in the community at this moment, we use the COVID tracker app here just to be on the safe side. Sir George Grey was an enthusiastic collector of plants and animals in the tradition of wealthy Victorian gentlemen. He planted hundreds of different trees and introduced many exotic animals, including wallabies, kookaburras, peacocks, zebras and monkeys in the grounds around his house. In 1869, Prince Alfred, second son of Queen Victoria, visited. With our GoPro lowered on a pole, we can have a look into a cellar. There are many beautifully furnished rooms upstairs. This is Governor Gray's bedroom with its half canopy bed. The highlight is the view from the balcony out to Mansion House Bay. Here the balconies look down into a courtyard. There are rooms everywhere. We were getting hungry so we headed into the garden area for lunch. Peacocks and peahens around Mansion House today are legacies of Sir George Grey. We decided to have lunch in the shade of the beautiful trees here. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Then it was time to find the geocaches. Okay, 77 metres away. Okay, we see Urban Gypsy's name in here. Yeah. The geocacher we know well. We just signed the log. And there are a few little things in here. A little pencil sharpener. Other little cute things for the kids. A little marble. Well, actually, it's a bead, I think. And, of course, our puff tag, a little baby kiwi. There are still wallabies on the island. Small pedestrian gates next to the larger gates make it easy to get by. As it was earth cache day, we headed over to the copper mine with its earth cache. Our first view of the copper mine's pumping house with its brick chimney. 
finally we catch up with the others. How's Bunny Bruce? Good. Good? Oh, yeah. We did wonder when you might show up. We chatted about the earth cache and a multi not far away. They continued on. Right, as our friends have just told us, we have to leave the path here and do a little bit of bush bashing. Not very difficult though, so we're heading off over here. You need to be a little careful here as there are steep drop-offs. Maybe it down through here. Ha. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> Where would you hide the cash? Got the cash. Open it up. That's a nice big one. No watch. <laughs> Strap's broken. Then it was down to the foreshore and the copper mine. The mine opened in 1846. Over two decades, about 2,500 tonnes of ore was mined and smelted for copper. The mine ran well under the sea and needed a powerful pump to keep the water out. Eventually the water problem became too great and the mine flooded. The base of the steam engine and pump room, which kept the mine free of water, is made of Waitamata sandstone. The rocks here are stained with blue copper sulphate. We had fun here answering some simple questions to claim the earth cache. On logging it, we received this year's Earth Cache Day souvenir with its background picture of New Zealand's Punakaiki rocks featured in another of our cache walks. The rusty boiler here dates from the short-lived attempt to rework the mine in 1898 to 1900. We were running late for Gorby's geocaching event at Mansion House Bay, so had to speed up a little. We made it with five minutes to spare. A group photo was taken. We headed to the ferry after a wonderful and interesting day on Kawau Island. Well, this brings us to the end of our cache walk. We hope you enjoyed Kawau Island with us. It was a great trip, lovely boat trip. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <a> peacock. Peacock. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to go geocaching. <laughs>